hi um yeah haircut <laughs> beard trim um i want to start this video off with an apology in my last coffee time with cobra i was quite angry uh, i was emotionally compromised and uh, I let my emotions get the better of me. I wasn't thinking logically. And I said some very harsh things about people that uh, I take full ownership of. And I make a public apology. I shouldn't have said those things. Um, so yeah, uh, I was a bit of a dick. And um, I apologize for that. Now, that aside, hi, how are you guys? You good? Great. This is going to be a bit of a weird coffee time because I'm going to start talking about my private life. Um, for the past 15, 16 years, I have been in a on-again, off-again relationship with someone very, very near and dear to me. Um, currently, right now, it's a distance thing. Uh, namely, she's in the US, I'm in the UK. Um... And I've written, never really talked about our relationship in any kind of coffee time with Cobra or any live stream uh, for that reason because of privacy. But she has given me the go-ahead to discuss it. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, <laughs> I love her with, with literally in ways that I just can't put into words. I really do. I love all three of her boys. Um, I've known them since the day they were all born. Uh, they call me their second dad. Uh, my friend, this person I'm in a relationship with, is married and 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 the with the biological father of all three of her kids. And I, I have no intention of breaking up their marriage or anything like that. It's not my place. I don't do that. I have been cheated on, and it fucking sucks. But um, she is polyamorous, same as me. Um, I don't really need to describe what polyamory is, but if I do, just Google it. Um, and the only thing I can say about polyamory is, or being poly in general, is it's unique to the person. Um, yes, there's the textbook definition of what it is, but that doesn't necessarily cover everything. So... There's that. Now, she asked me, she asked me actually to do this. She asked me to describe our relationship and what it means to me. So I'm doing this for her, as well as the fact that what do you really want me to talk about? A, a, a ship that loses power twice within 10 seconds of each other. So the main generator went down. So the main engines went down. And the backup generators went down. Do you understand that the, the statistics chance of that actually happening is like astronomically low? Well, here's what it is. Or Stephen Crowder suing his ex-co-worker. And I, I, I don't care about any of that. I really don't. It's not news to me. Well, it, it's news, but it's not news to me. Um, so I'm going to get back on what I was going to talk about and that is that is someone very very close to my heart and when I first met her um, <laughs> I could tell from her attitude that she was a veteran she is Navy um, and so we had this, we have this dark sense of humor. All veterans have this dark sense of humor. We just do. Um, and, um, <laughs> so we, we hit it off because we were insulting people. We met in, a, in an online platform called Second Life. I still go on Second Life. I still am on Second Life. So is she. We're actually partners in Second Life. Um, we take our partnership seriously. And she means the absolute universe to me. 
So do those boys. You've got to understand, words are failing me right now when it comes to describing what she means to me. They just, they just do. I mean, I could give you some sappy love song line, but what's the point? Doesn't serve anything. And again, I, I am polyamorous, so I do have multiple partners. She's one of them. She's my main partner. She's my main alpha partner. And she means everything to me. And I mean everything to her. And she makes me want to be a better person. And I am a better person with her in my life. And the thought of her not being in my life terrifies me. And I'm, I don't scare easy. And I really don't scare easy. And I'm not saying that to be macho. I'm genuinely, I have no com comprehension of fear. I genuinely don't. People would say, oh, we need someone to do it. Okay, I'll do it. There's a chance you're going to die. Okay, there's a chance I'm going to die eating food. You could swallow a bit of meat the wrong way. And you're dead, you know. So, swings and roundabouts, really. <laughs> that was my mindset on everything. It was swings and roundabouts. <laughs> but, like me, she also suffers from PTSD. And we try to support each other where we can, when we can, when we're going through lulls. Me, um, I've not slept yet. <laughs> you can probably tell by the bags on my eyes. Uh, and it is, in fact, 6.55 in the morning. And I have not been to bed yet in probably a day and a half. Because I'm in one of my PTSD highs. And this is the only cup of coffee, cup of coffee I've had um, in that time uh, since then all I've had is water literally water it's all I drink I mean I have Ribena but that's just stuff you add to water and I've been trying to wean myself off of caffeine so it's not a coffee it's not a like a coffee high like jittery kind of thing it's not it at all i i have a set thing idea of what i want to do in life and the goals and how i'm going to achieve them and it's literally point shoot point shoot it's literally it's all it is it's my mindset point shoot point shoot point shoot I have to, I have to, I have to. And, um, yeah. So. Is what it is. But, um, her first name is Janet. Although she doesn't like to be called that. She likes to be called by her nickname. This is Nisha. Nisha. And um, she's my absolute sweetheart. She controls my heart next to my daughter. My heart is segmented into four. This is my nan. This is my daughter. There is Nisha. And the fourth, that was my father. Now two of those four people are dead. My grandmother and my father. So a big portion of my heart is dark. Black. Never love again. And my daughter even shares her space with my son. So, space in my heart is very limited. So when I do say to someone that I love them, I genuinely mean it. And I do love them. But at the same time, there are times my brain can't process what love is. Because I've never been told someone loves me in that way um, I can count on one hand how many times my father said to me that he loves me and I can remember it and that's once my mum never said it to me in fact my mother at the age of 15 
showed up at the one and only birthday party I wanted to have, which was my 15th birthday party. She showed up to it drunk in front of all my school friends and said, happy birthday, son. I wish I never had you. That was her birthday present to me. And pretty damn much about a day later, I moved out and started sofa surfing with friends and I refused to move back I, I literally I left I moved out I packed a rucksack and a gym bag with some of my clothes and what I couldn't fit in my those two bags I didn't take with me and I ended up getting I dropped out of secondary school because it was just before I did my GCSEs. So I dropped out my sec I dropped out of secondary. I, I mean, I showed up, did the, the attendance, went A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B. I didn't even bother to read the questions. I just, I fucked up my GCSEs because I was in a bad mental place. I was in a bad headspace. Fucked up my GCSEs. And all I cared about, because I had a job lined up. I was working at a, a, in a restaurant as a, pie, as a chef at uh, Manzi's Pie Mash in Peckham. Still there, by the way. Although not for long, because apparently the um, landlord who owns the building won't re renew their tenancy, because the, all the buildings, that building section that he has, is all earmarked for a new development, so it's all going to get levelled and whatnot, which is a fucking shame, because Manzis has been there since 1909. And even during the Millwall riots, when the shop got burnt down, they rebuilt it, and they did not move. They stayed in the exact same building. And it's a fucking shame. Because Manzi's was so cool to me. Graham, I love you, my dude. Thank you for giving me a chance. You know, I started off as a, a, a pie boy. Making just the pies. Making the dough. Making the pies. Uh, and peeling it. I'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Get to the back of the shop. Be let in. Changed. Go downstairs. Grab whatever, how many bags of potatoes, and I'm talking full 50 kilo, like full 50 pound sacks, 35, 40 kilo sacks of potatoes, and I would move them by myself. And then Graham would say, we need six sacks. So I've got to take all six sacks, open them up, and we had one potato peeling machine that spins the potatoes really, really fast with some water. And what it does is it grates them against like a, a, a grill and it shreds the, the skin off the potatoes. And you open it up, all you get is peeled, peeled potatoes. And it would take about three minutes to do that. Well, not even that, less than that, about a minute, minute and a half. But it would take you another minute and a half to clean the machine in between each sack because you had to for health and safety reasons. So did that, got all of them ready, put them in buckets with some a desiccant, which stops them from going yellow. And set them up. Then I'd help Chris set up the, the, the pots for the potatoes. Because the potatoes took about 35, 40 minutes to cook. And we needed some of the um, starch from the potatoes to make the liquor. Again, long story short, by the time I was done everything, the shop was... And then, of course, you know, 8, eight o'clock, I'm been handed the keys i've got to go up front take these great big huge steel girders off the windows slide them in through the shop set all the shop make sure the the till ladies need if they needed anything or not great i'd get my lunch break about 10 and i'd always have pie mash because it's free uh, so i'd have my pie mash for lunch wash up my plate my fork my spoon things of that nature um then start doing the daily order so they wanted order for a liquor bucket of liquor goes in there goes up Want mashed potatoes? Back at a mash goes up there. They want pies. Trays of pies go up there. While that we're doing, I, I, it was such a cool job. I loved it. I did. I worked there for like a year and a half. And the only reason why I quit was because I was in the cadets and I knew I was going to end up going in the army anyway. Plus, I was doing my boxing and a whole bunch of other stuff going on at the time. I couldn't do it all, and also at the same time, I was working a job as a landscape gardener as well. So, uh, I would do Monday to Friday at, at Manzi's, be done by three in the afternoon. At five, I'd get meet up 
with my new boss, who's a landscape gardener, and we'd go off in his van and do people's gardens and whatnot till about 7.30, 8 o'clock, sometimes even 9 o'clock at night. He'd drop me off in Catford, which is nowhere near where I lived, and then I'd end up getting the bus home from Catford. Get home, and I would literally be falling asleep eating my dinner. And I did that for... God. I want to say almost a year. While still working at the man. Yeah, because... Yeah, and eventually my nan was like, you've got to stop, you're killing yourself, Dan. And I was, I was literally... I was muscle, but no body fat. I was really fucking aesthetic. If I was a body pill, I'd, I looked like fucking Adonis. But the point was, I had no energy. None. I, I would... My mom, my nan stopped me from drowning, from falling asleep in the bath. Twice. I just had no energy. And eventually she was like, you can't do this, you're killing yourself, boy. And... I... I ended up quitting doing the landscaping job. Because eventually the guy just started fucking me on my pay. And... I started staying at the cadet base. That's why I was living for a while, was at the cadet base, because you could stay there for up to six weeks, and you'd have to chop and change kind of thing. Um, yeah, it, it's it's an inter- It's a long story. It's a very long story. And um, <laughs> I... We'll speed it up to when I'm 23. So it's 2003 just finished my last deployment in Afghanistan no Iraq was it Iraq it was it was somewhere in the, in the way yeah it was Afghanistan um and I was done my ACL was torn and you need your ACL to push the clutch and whatnot couldn't do it no more I got medically discharged they offered me a desk job I took it for a bit but I missed it. I missed the diesel. I missed the camaraderie. I missed the boys. I missed, yeah, being in an air-conditioned office. Great. Moving tons of paperwork. Not so great. Um, my highlight of the day was someone coming in asking me if I wanted a cup of coffee or tea. It just, I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Mostly because I left the service, medically discharged, second lieutenant, so I got field commission. Um, didn't go in as an officer. I, I, my, all all my, my promotions were field, field promotions, which I earned through doing something very, very fucking stupid, which you should never fucking do. Again, like I said, no concept of, of danger. None. <laughs> I have none. And so when I left, they gave me my full pension because it was army related issue full pension um even gave me a little bit of my 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 pay early and i was like i'm going to america and that's when i met nisha uh i had just moved i was living in utah she was living in california at the time california or, yeah it was california she was living in california at the time and um <laughs> She used to see how my ex-wife would would physically and mentally abuse me. And um, she was surprised that I hadn't already, you know. And um, we stopped talking for a bit. Um, She had moved to Texas. And I had moved to North Carolina. And, uh, yeah. So, still to this day, it bums her out that I left. I never didn't, I never got to see it, say hello to her or anything. But that's going to change. That is going to change, guys. Because I have plans on, I'm waiting to hear back from a friend who owns a business in Texas, in uh, uh, Arizona, about getting me a work visa. So there's a high chance I will be getting a work visa, a sponsored work visa, so that I will be 
flying out to the States and the work visa, I think, is for a year and a half, two, no, it's two years. So I'll have to renew my visa. Uh, no. Is it, how long does a, a work visa, I've got to check this out now. How long does a work visa, US work visa last? You're making me Google this. How long does a US work visa last? Initially granted for three years with a potential of extension of up to six years. There we go. Uh, and it would be a H-1B visa for non-immigrant work visa. In specialty occupations, which for me is security. Cyber security. Um, so there we go. Um, but it also means I can swap it. I can swap the visa later on down the line if I want to become a full resident and all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah. And this time, uh, Arizona is a lot closer to Texas than North Carolina. So, uh, hopefully I do want to, uh, swing by in, um, see her and give the boys a big hug and I, I want to be there for Thomas is her oldest I want to be there for his uh, graduation he uh, is in ROTC and wants to join either the army or the army air force or marines he hasn't made his choice yet he's going into the armed service though he wants the marines was his grandpa the navy is his mum so he's kind of torn between the two and I'm like well the marines are technically part of the navy it's fighting words i know but it's true okay <laughs> the, the navy is just <laughs> a very expensive uber for the marines <laughs> and, uh, some of my marine followers will be like yeah if i can write and some of my navy fans would be just like oh, rolling if i can eyes yeah oh but yeah that's Nisha has this thing where she can somehow just magically get me to talk. It's Thursday, the 28th of March. It's 7 10 a.m. See? Currently, it's four degrees and feels like zero with partly cloudy skies. Uh huh. You can expect windy weather and possible drizzles starting later this morning, uh -huh. continuing until evening. Yeah. Today's high will be 10 degrees at really? 3 p.m. Uh -huh. and feel like nine. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> it does that to me all the time. I never even set that up. It just does it. <laughs> but, no, I, um, so hopefully, fingers crossed soon, I will be stateside again and happy, truly happy, because I've never really been happy. Um, and I'm not just saying that uh, even my own family will tell you they've never seen me happy they've never seen me smile they've never like like full on smile they've never seen me ecstatically happy they've never I mean I my mum to this day will tell you I've never been happy since the age of 8 up until the age of 8 Happy little boy. Eight years old and up. Nothing. And. I have a melancholy in me. If you don't know what it is. Google that. I have. Bouts of. It will be alright. I'm okay. And then I get bouts of. Severe depression. To the point where. I don't just contemplate about taking my life. I have plans. And this is why I try my best to help people with mental health issues. Uh, I go to a veterans group where we all meet up and talk. And I've noticed lately um, we're missing two people. And we haven't heard from them, which usually means it's not good news. They haven't moved away. 
they just you know what I mean um, and so for the longest time for the longest time Nisha has been part of my group my little circle my little clique to help me get through my dark times my bad days um, and I'll forever be grateful to her for that and I try my best to help her with hers uh, fireworks are a trigger of mine they also happen to be a trigger of hers so during things like um, 4th of July uh, things of that nature we're in each other's discord call headphones on just talking looking at each other talking you know and she tries her best to help me I try my best to help her um, and yeah it, it It can be rough sometimes, and I wouldn't call her driftwood, but she's my life raft at times. And um, I'm lucky, and I call myself lucky because I'm lucky because I have the support system of a good woman like her and my daughter. My daughter is 23 years old. She has overcome so much adversity that it boggles my mind, boggles my mind at how much she has gone through. And come out with a smile on her face. Not always. Not always, not always, but she does come out with a smile on her face. And when she does, the room lights up. So, Nisha, this Coffee Time with Cobra is dedicated to you. As promised. Uh, this coffee is almost done guys so this video is going to be done plus it's 30 minutes is a bit of a long soppy video for me to just be me 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 about and uh, to my other partners no it doesn't mean I've forgotten about you or I don't care about you or I don't love you of course I do it's just she asked me to do this video and so I'm doing it is what it is Coffee's done. So the video's done. See you in the next one, guys.